Hey, what's up folks? Grandison Shines here with Sudura International and I am accompanied by our two, my two favorite coaches. Well, to my left I have... Yasmin Murray. Yasmin Murray. All right, awesome. And on to my right I have... Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. Curator of nonsense. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. We are back in the studio making this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about killing self-defeating thoughts. As a leader, we all have thoughts going on in our head every single day. And we have to deal with our negative thoughts in a certain way and control those thoughts, but at the same time, being a leader, we also have to control the thoughts of others when they are talking negative. This is something that can really change the temperature, change the morale, of the environment wherever your workplace is, whether it's out in the field or whether it is internal there in the office. Yasmin, I'm gonna start with you. What does it mean to you to have negative thoughts or what does that mean for you, I should say? And then how do you control your negative thoughts? What are some of the things you do? You know, everyone has self-defeating thoughts or negative thoughts. Mine come to me when I'm by myself. Mm. So I, just, I try to stay busy. Okay, all right. What about you? Well, negative, when I have negative thoughts, I have learned to open my mouth and say something contrary to those negative thoughts. There you go. That's nice. One of the ways, scientifically proven way, to interrupt your thoughts mm -hmm. is to talk. It is impossible for you to think mm -hmm. and talk at the same time. Right. So I'll say something positive, I'll remind myself of past successes. I'll remind myself of who I am. Mm -hmm. I will sometimes simply just remind myself that that's a negative thought. That's self-defeating. Sure, right. So that's how I deal with it. Yeah, I deal with it in both similar ways to you guys as well. Understanding that, like you were talking about, you can't have the thought and the conversation going at the same time. One of the reasons why I talk to myself at times, I know that I am talking directly to myself. I'm affirming some things within myself. And for me, that's an important aspect because it continues to help me build a thought pattern and behavior in my thought pattern until it continues to perpetuate that way in terms of my actions that I'm going to do. And we'll be talking about this cycle here, or I should say the thought cycle. The thoughts yes. become things. Thoughts become things. So as we continue on, we'll be talking about that shortly as well. Yasmin. Now, controlling the thoughts of other people. Let's say you're in an office, mm -hmm. give us a quick scenario. Someone comes over to you and they have just some negativity about that. How important is it to change that? And what do you do to facilitate the change of thought in the person? Absolutely, that negative thoughts become actions, mm -hmm. like we talked about, and negative actions have a consequence, especially mm -hmm. at work. Absolutely. When I've been encountered by one of my either colleagues, peers, or somebody that I am leading, mm -hmm. I would definitely get to the root of it. Tell me, right. tell me, talk to me about it. Sure. What happened? Where is this coming from? And then one by one, eliminate any of those negative thoughts right. by something positive. Okay. And let it be their idea. Okay, so how can you counterattack that? Sure. Okay. If, it comes from me, it's gonna be different, but if it comes from them, they will, they're sure to act to it in a positive manner okay. because it's their idea. Awesome. So just counterattacking negative thoughts and ideas with something positive, like Al said, and let them rationalize it, go to the depth of it. What is causing this? Right, okay. So what advice can you give those people in the workplace environment as well? If someone coming to them, let's say the support is coming to them with something negative, how do you counteract that? What would be a good way to counteract that? I do like to ask questions first. I've learned to not react when something happens, mm -hmm. but to okay. pause, take a step back. Even if I don't necessarily have a thought in those moments, just taking a second sure. before you say something, before you, say before something. you act, sure. gives you the opportunity to think, to calm yourself down, not have that emotional response sure. that could further or lead to further damage in the situation. So I pause and then I ask questions. 
And sometimes I would say it's the devil's advocate if somebody's coming to me with a negative thing. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that is? Well, how do you know that's what it is? Have you Correct. considered this, that, or the other? Right. Mm -hmm. I have a client that I'm coaching and they were talking about how they feel like they're being dumped on. And they have some personal relationships within the organization. I asked my coachee, have you considered that maybe they give those things to you because they know you and trust you to get it done? Right. You're the expert. Right. So it's not them trying to dump on you. They trust you, so they're giving you more work. Right. And he was quiet for a second. <laughs> <laughs> had to think about it that way. Yeah. Had to reframe yeah. what right. was going on. Right. But they also have the opportunity to say, I have enough on my plate. Can you give it to somebody else? Why do they keep accepting it? And thus it well, becomes negative. Right. Well, it's, it's negative mainly because that person feels like they're dumping on exactly. them. Sure. But if you feel like I'm the go-to guy, right. then it changes the whole dynamic. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan never felt like his team was dumping on him. By passing the ball all the exactly. time. Exactly. I'm the man. Yeah. I need to take the last shot. Sure. Give me the ball. Sure. That's a very good way to change someone's anyway. negative thought. Great way to change someone's negative thought. And that's important what he's talking about to facilitate that kind of conversation because some of your subordinates or even sometimes your superiors may not think about it that way. And that's where the value of coaching from Yasmin and, and, and Al really comes into play for the coaches that we all have by giving that different perspective and that was again a fantastic way of getting your coachy to think in a different way yes cool. another thing Grandison is that I know for myself when I feel some negative thoughts coming into my head I will pick up the phone and call somebody I know is positive yes that's a good way to do that just talking to someone who's got positive energy just puts you in a, in a good mood and you don't think negatively. Sure. I am, I would say I'm a positive person, but I still have days that I have negative thoughts. Sure. So that's how I deflect them. Yeah. And we all do. And it's, as the opportunity is for us as leaders to understand how to balance it in us. As I was talking about, you guys talking about, the, the gentleman did have an opportunity to say no, that could balance out his workload. Al gave him an opportunity to think of it a different way, to balance out the thinking, not from the negative, but also counteract it with the positive. So either way, the balance piece is critically important. And when you're having negative thoughts, it is critical to have balance. Now let's talk about the cycle here, and then we'll talk about each particular nuance of the cycle. Five points in the thought cycle. The thought cycle, whether it's positive or negative, you have thoughts, the thoughts transact, turn into words, Words then become actions, actions become behaviors, and then behaviors, you have a consequence. And that continues to go around in circle. It continues to perpetuate. Again, so you have thoughts, you have words, you have the actions, behaviors, and then the consequences. We talked about the thoughts. Let's talk about the words for a second. How important are words to either suppress and or to dish out? I'm going to start with you. Words are critically important. We believe mm -hmm. what we say. Correct. Physiologically, the way our body is designed. Right. So if you open your mouth to say something, mm -hmm. there is a strong likelihood that you are going to believe what you say. Right. If you are saying a lot of negative things, you are putting energy behind right. those negative thoughts by right. using words yep. or putting them into words. Energy, then, folks. Yes, yeah. which perpetuates per per right. the cycle. Right, and that's that is how that is the start of how those negative things happen. Right. So it's critically important being able to arrest the negative thought sure. by saying something positive. That's yep. why that other energy, counteractive right. energy, is yeah. so important. That's why that's why it's a, a, a great thing to do. Right. Because if you don't. The, how do you stop the cycle? Yep. It'll continue to go. It'll continue to the Negative thought, you say something negative, and then it'll continue to go through yeah. the cycle. And that's important to think about it that way, like he's saying, because we teach in our one of our modalities five levels of thinking. Most people stop at the third level of thinking, express the thing, but the fourth level of thinking is on energetic thinking, understanding that those words will become things, and they'll become actions, what we'll talk about later on. So, Yasmin, how about words for you? How important are words and... 
How important is it to diffuse the negative thoughts with words and to let them come out or not? What's your thoughts? I just want to add to what Al said, that when you say something out loud, you're confirming it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now what my thoughts are, now I'm going to speak those thoughts and I'm going to confirm that's exactly what I'm thinking. Correct. And then once they're out of your mouth, now they're out in the universe. Like you said, now you're sending that negative energy out. Yep. You get back what you sent out. Yep. I'm sure that we can all attest to the, the old adage, when you say I can and I can't, guess what? You're right in both instances. And my CFO used to bury that into our head as students when we were learning martial arts because when we said we could not, guess what? We were right and we didn't. We, we didn't in our actions because we said we can't. And now I want to go to action. So what about we have the thoughts, we have the words, and the words transforming that energy into what we're actually going to do. Actions. How important are actions to make sure we don't have negative actions and those thoughts as well. So once the words are uttered, now you're going to act on it. So if you say, well, I'm depressed and I can't do it, you're going to get depressed and you sit in a corner and you're going to further get depressed. And now your body can't move because you have confirmed and put out in the, the, that energy out there, now I can't move. And I've seen that happen personally. I know one of my relatives had that issue. They were depressed and any time they, they got further depressed when they confirmed not only the thoughts but out loud that they were depressed. And then it started with tears, now they're crying. And from crying it became, you know, you could even see the face just drawing down. Mm -hmm. It just takes a toll on your entire body. So it's not just the thoughts and the words, it the actions, it just, you can see it. Right, okay. It, it transforms you, you are transformed. Your right. thoughts and words can transform into whatever it is that you are thinking and you made that a reality. Okay, how about actions for you? As I was thinking, I, I wanna tell I guess a story about my experience sure, with this to absolutely. illustrate this point. This first became apparent to me in high school when I was playing football. My mom never wanted me to play. Mm -hmm. She was always afraid I was going to get hurt. <laughs> I was a backyard sandlot hero. No pads, no helmets out there hitting. Mm -hmm. Love doing it, every opportunity I had. Sometimes we played in the street. Yep. Which is, I can't even Crazy. imagine my kids know, doing it, but we did it. We did it too. When I finally got on a football field, I was all of a sudden in the back of my head afraid of getting hurt. Mm. And I would say, I don't want to get hurt. Mm. Guess who got I hurt? It said it. Yep. Guess who got hurt? <laughs> Yours truly. Yes, absolutely. Then I started paying attention to other guys on the team and the guys who were afraid of getting hurt, they got hurt. always got hurt. Yep. But the guys who went with reckless mm -hmm. abandon, did not care, mm -hmm. were trying to deliver the blow, yeah. acted the fool, did crazy stuff. They lasted the whole <laughs> seat, did not miss a game. Then I started paying attention to it. You mentioned family. We all have family and friends who claim they open their mouth. They've had the thought and they open their mouth and say, I'm sickly. Yep. I always get sick. Yes. Yes. And guess who always gets sick? The one who says that. The ones who say that. Correct. And I'm sure whoever's watching this video, you can relate to this. <laughs> there is somebody in your life who says negative things all the time and those negative things come to pass and they sure. believe it and you cannot get them off of it. I was talking to a guy I, we were talking about the current situation going on and he was he said he was the type of guy that always gets sick so he's going to do whatever they say do because I always get mm. sick I told him I never get sick I never get sick I don't get sick my body will fight off whatever it is right. at the worst I'll experience a little sniffle or maybe a headache but nothing where I have mm -hmm. to miss a day, I'm in bed. I can't tell you the last time. And you all know, have you, do yeah. you know when I've been sick? Nope, not really, no. No. Mm -mm. So I told him I don't get sick. And since I have been saying that, I do not get sick. That's it. So That's it. The, the power of our words and our 
actions mm -hmm. will line up with that. Our physiology will change. There's been studies that, be, that, that have been done to prove this. Sure. People who are afraid, I'll, I'll say this last point. There was a, a research uh, uh, done with people who were afraid of getting the flu and people who were not afraid of getting the flu. They had them intermingle, then they hooked them up to sensors, and then they told them, hey, you just intermingled with people who had the flu. The people who were afraid of getting the flu, their physiology literally changed. Mm -hmm. They panicked, their pores opened up. Mm -hmm. So it made their body susceptible, right. right? It positioned the body to act and behave the way they thought it should. Absolutely. If I was around people to get the flu, that means I'm gonna catch it. Right. The ones who were not afraid, the body didn't change at all. So it, it's a, it is a real thing. It's not imaginary, right. it's not foo-foo. This stuff works. Absolutely. And it's important to understand that so you can change it for the positive. Absolutely. And a lot of times when you are telling yourself, when you, at least with the thought, and then you say the words, then you'll see that your body, you're going to get up and most likely do something. You can go, you can look at something, I need to go do this, and you say that, you think it, you say it out loud, and next thing you know, your body gets up and you go and do that thing. So you have that action behind the words. It's all energy. It doesn't go away, it just transforms. The thought energy becomes the words that you actually hear that we can put out in the real world so people can have some sort of affinity with it by hearing it and doing something. Then you actually move your body or they move their body to do that particular thing. And then we get into the aspect of behavior. But you want to say something else before that? I was just going to talk about our modality the five parts of authentic self, mm -hmm. mind, will. You can will, you will yourself, yourself to do something. To exactly. Be sick, or you can will yourself yes. to be well. Right. Yes. All you have to do is imagine. That's right. Like yes. and, and that's what happens before you actually move your body. You will yourself to do something. I need to get up and go do this. Guess what? My will is saying, okay, let's go do it. Mm -hmm. And then you act on that. And then we switch to behaviors, which is the perpetuation of the continued action over an extended period of time to where it becomes default in us. And that becomes that behavior that we've programmed in our head, in our subconscious. Our brain from a physiological standpoint has created the neural pathway. And now we're continuing to do that thing. And, with, and again, there are times we do, we have some behaviors by default. One of my default behaviors is my brain actually says, hey, Guess what? There's chocolate over there. I would just go get the chocolate and eat it. <laughs> I love talking about it. But that's, that's true. So my behavior around chocolate, I've had to really consciously think about, okay, I'm not going to eat that because I know if I'm eating it, it's going to be devoured. I'm going to eat the whole chocolate store. I'm going to Gary Deli's right now. Yeah. And I get, and I go. There we go. So behavior, actual uh, behaviors. What are you going to say? Well, I was going to say also the self-control piece then. Yes. We we'll always have to control it, yes. Right. So we can control From modality of five parts of the self, self-control being one. Yep. Absolutely. Thank behaviors. You. What about behaviors for you? Well, behaviors are going to line up with what you think mm -hmm. and what you say. Mm -hmm. And what you continue There's to act no on. Way. Yep. Yes. What you think, you say, you believe. You know, the thoughts come first and the actions follow. So those behaviors, you, you'll, if you don't arrest it, you will continue those same thoughts, right. those same actions which now becomes the behavior. Right. And there's different science on uh, those, how long it takes for you to develop behaviors or a sure. habit. Habits. And that's, that's just how it goes. There's no, there's no way around it. And right. all of us can look at areas in our life where we continue to do something over and over and it became a habit, it became a, a behavior, a way of being for us. Right. And the crazy thing is when you do, if you do, have a behavior, it is super difficult <laughs> to change it. It is. It's like it sneaks it up is. on you and then you do it. If you're not aware, it, it, it's a, so much a part of you that you feel like is normal. Correct. And that it's okay. And you right. find ways to justify it. Right. Ultimately, though, you still have the ability to change it. You control it. And it goes back to your thoughts and the words that you say and, you know, the beginning of the cycle. Right. Yes. What about behaviors for you from your standpoint? Behaviors for me, again, like I said, solidify your thoughts, your actions. And when you start behaving like that, you're just confirming everything. Like you said, it's just a circle. It just continues in that circle. Yeah. Main thing about behaviors, folks, remember that the behaviors institute or actually they actually they coincide with the actual 
thoughts or the, the default, the default action. Behaviors and actions are side by side, meaning that your actions, behaviors are going to continue to perpetuate that. These actions over and over and over and over and over. And as you continue to do them over and over and over, you're programming them. You're programming yourself to continue that behavior. Yes. And then you have to really intentionally think about how to change that behavior and then reverse engineer the whole entire cycle. It has everything to do with communication, has everything with how you see leadership, has everything to do with how you see accountability and how you actually see confidence being over superimposed over all three of those. It has everything to do with that. The, the final one in the, in the thought cycle is consequences and con everything has consequences everything has consequences Quans consequences have had a negative connotation but it's not negative it's just the the re it's just the outcome mm -hmm. of whatever you have been doing based on your thoughts words actions behaviors and then the consequences and not a th this is where the accountability comes into play we have to understand that we have control over that we have to own it so whatever consequences we have for being a bad leader, whatever consequences we have for not holding ourselves accountable, let's share now with, with and then we'll get some of your thoughts. When it comes to consequences, how do you, and accountability, how do you effectively manage that internally? Well, first of all, let's talk about the consequence. When you have negative thoughts, negative actions, you're behaving negatively, now it's affecting in your performance your performance drops and when your performance drops somebody's going to notice it hopefully and then what's going to happen what's the consequence you are either going to be reprimanded or you're going to be fired mm -hmm. depending how grave the situation is mm -hmm. now how do you fix it there are many steps that you can take number one is first of all you have to recognize it mm -hmm. that there is an issue and once you recognize it, then, of course, you find a remedy, the cure. So it's just like, you know, if you've got a cold, you, you start to get sniffles. When you get sniffles, okay, either I need to go get some medicine or I need to rest or stay away from people, whatever you need to do. Right. You have okay. to follow certain steps before it becomes a pandemic. Tell them to them. Tell you again. Before it becomes <laughs> All right. All right, cool. How about you for consequences? I think the... The most important thing to realize that is that what you said, consequence is just the outcome or the results of your actions. Mm -hmm. It's not a positive or a negative thing in and of itself. I think we have other terms like rewards and things like that that make it seem like it's different. But a reward is essentially a consequence of positive actions or Correct. desired actions. Right. So this cycle ends in consequence. It's on both sides. So I think if you get a grasp of all of it being a consequence of your action, mm -hmm. that better positions you to see them on the same plane. So you can identify how this cycle works on the positive side and how it works on the negative side. Right, right. There really is no difference between the two. Right. I think sometimes we feel like because consequences is negative and we, we don't really want to deal with negative things. That is like the, gut, the gutter of society and I don't want to deal with that, <laughs> those things. Right. Right. The gutter of our lives, maybe I should say. Right. So we don't want to deal with consequences because it's a negative thing. And so those areas that are negative in our life, we tend to try to just ignore them. They, they don't ever go away. They still come back to bite you. Right. True. <laughs> you know? True. It's no different. So I think if, if we can get away from making a, a separation between the two and understand it's the same cycle, the, the, the way the things that you did to get the positive outcomes, you can do on the negative things. It's the same process. Same Just process. change your thoughts. Change the thoughts. You yep. know, it's not not some big, difficult thing that you can't do. No, sure. Just change the way you think over here. Just Absolutely. like you did over there. Yes. And. Go ahead. But some people have difficulty changing that. 
thought process? Well, it's that's, that's, why, why, that's why we're coaching them, right? Yeah, well, that's why we get to coach, yes. yes. But that, that's what I'm trying to say. I think it's because they see it as a negative. Sure. Like, it's a whole separate negative thing over here. So that's why it's so challenging, because consequences and the bad actions, no, it's the same. It's the same cycle. Same cycle. Same cycle. And that's important to realize. It is the same exact cycle. And it's more like, if you think about the FIFO met the first in, first out, you have the, the whatever thought, whether it's positive or negative, and if you think it and you catch it, let's say you say something, you catch it, then you have to start the process all over by starting with a positive thought against that thing, that negative thing that you just thought. Go to the positive words, go to the positive action, positive behaviors, and then the positive consequence. So at some point in time, you have to realize when you are in that negative cycle and turn it around. As leaders, we're responsible for that for ourselves, and we have to have this mastered within ourselves in order to help other people be the best employees or be the best team members they can be. So we all come with varying degrees of thought ability. When I say thought ability, I mean how we think in terms of depth, height, everything else, and how we interweave between the five levels of thinking throughout the day. We have different varying degrees of how we utilize that. However, as I was saying, the thought cycle is all the same. The consequence, the outcome, the result, where you start off positive, then there's where the positive, there's where the reward. You start off negative, the consequence is going to be more of a demerit at some point. So you have that, those two. Our job as leaders is to make sure that we continue on in the positive direction. So I'm going to pause it right here. Yeah, as music, let's take us through the eight different ways, as you have on the paper there, about the work environment, what people can do in the work environment so that they can have a more positive outcome or defeat those negative thoughts. Well, before I do that, I have a question for both of you. Sure. How would you deal with someone who's always negative? always negative and they don't realize they're always negative and that's affecting everyone around them. Yeah, that's a tough one to deal with. You want to go first? Sure. Okay. If I have to <laughs> deal with them. Right. <laughs> As a leader, you might have somebody on your team or somebody sure. that you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's important to consistently bring awareness. Mm -hmm. Not in, a, in, attack, in attack mode or in from a place of defense. But Tyrone, you just said this. Do you understand? Have you thought about how I might perceive what you just yes. said? Or have you thought yes. about what your coworkers think Correct. when you say something like that? Sure. How, how can that perceive, be perceived as a positive thing? Try to take them down the self-reflection path so that they can begin to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. That's typically how I, I like to do with it. I think about as a parent, our children have behaviors that are not necessarily behaviors that we want. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue to guide and coach them. Correct. And I tell my wife all the time, the kids are relentless in their behavior. So we got to be relentless in our parenting. Absolutely. They will continue to do the thing you don't want them to do over and over and over. And I look them in the eye and tell them, you are not going to outlast me. I will wear you <laughs> I down. I will wear you down. My will is stronger yeah. than yours. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Every time you mess up, <laughs> if it comes to it, every time I'm going to get on you yeah. until you change your behavior. Yep. And so I don't want you to have that type of attitude. Or that that work. Of, yes. uh, yeah, don't, yes. don't act out that way <laughs> in the workplace. But the mentality yes. has to be, you cannot get frustrated. Correct. You cannot quit. And yeah. let somebody who's negative take over That's cool. your, so your workplace. Right yes. So powerful, yes. If you continue to be negative, I'm going to continue to bring it to your attention. We're going to continue to have these conversations. Until you and come you, to me, they're changing. Yeah, until purpose. you change it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like having these conversations, just change your behavior. But if you don't change your behavior, we'll continue to go through this cycle until you do. Yeah. Okay. Or you leave. Yes. Or you leave. <laughs> or you leave. I one better for you. Now, for you, what if it's your boss who is negative? constantly same thing I, I had to do this with my boss who was yeah. not directly in my office but every time he came in he would bring down the morale of my team and I had to tell him hey dude we you have to 
communi I communicate, this is how I operate this operation here. This is why we're doing well. I, I, I released all the benefits first. Yes. And then I told, and I share with him, when you come into the office, there's a negative out overtone for you and everyone gets discombobulated because of your energy. Yes. I had to have this conversation with the superior and I told him how we operate it. And I, I gave him some suggestions on what he could do like, that I do that mimic me. For instance, when he comes in the office, I said, I speak to everybody. My the office is back there. When I'm walking past everyone, I speak. You walk in, you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I had to correct him on that. He said, I didn't realize I did that. I said, yes, I, that's helping him around. People are thinking, they're perceiving, like you're talking mm -hmm. about, something is wrong with him when he comes into the office. And so everyone is, the, the morale, they shut down. They're not as talkative and everything else. I said, dude, that's not the way, that's why we're so so positive here. That's why we're doing a really good job because I keep up, keep up the morale. Yes. That's a very important thing to do. I gave him some things that I did, share what I did. I do continue to do in the office and I gave them to him and then he changed his behavior and then it became more fun for it when he came into the office as well. Yeah. The key thing you said was he wasn't aware of it. He wasn't aware of it. So it's important to bring it to the other person's awareness. Sure. Mm -hmm. They might not know that what they're doing and how it's affecting people. And, and leaders do realize you have control over that. You set the temperature and the morale of the environment. Some leaders are under the impression that the more staunch they are, the more gravitas they can show, more executive presence by not smiling, not saying hello, that that's more better for the, the, the respect that the other person's going to. No, 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 no. It's, I, I have, in my experience, has been the total opposite. Every time we coach somebody to go the other way, they have a positive result in the way that we're coaching them, not coming in being more autocratic and not being smiling and not being communicative. And then again, this has everything to do. Remember, whether you're saying words or not, you are communicating something by your actions, your nonverbal communication. People are reading it. And whether or not they putting together the right sentence from your nonverbal communication, that's totally up to you. Do it on purpose. Give them something to think about deliberately on purpose, not by default, by just how your regular actions are and you not being aware of them. Yes. I just wanted to share that. Yes. Yeah, all right. That was very helpful. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Here are the tips. <laughs> okay, so the first tip one. Tip number one? Okay. Tips? Yeah. You just uh, want one? No, I said, is this tip number one? What this you say? tip okay. number one, yes. Gotcha. Number one, <laughs> be constructive. <laughs> be constructive. Visualize a successful outcome. What do you guys think? Visualize a successful outcome. This is what we're talking about. Five levels of thinking, seeing the end from the beginning, that's, that's always important. That's an expansive thinking mindset. Yes. Level number five in our modality, five levels of thinking hinges on that right there. Yes. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. Oh. Think with the end there you go. in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with positive images. Visual, a lot of word, oh, I should say, what did it say? Pictures say a thousand words. And when you, look at a picture, you go into this imaginative state. So it usually happens when you look at a picture. There's some sort of imaginative state or, you're, or you even look deeper into that particular image. What that can do is spark a positive outcome or outlook or a deeper look into the certain situation. And that's something that's very helpful. Whether you notice you do that or not, next time you look at a picture, take notice on what the thought is behind that afterwards. Uh, I, I agree. You can't see a picture or, or an image that's positive without having positive thoughts right it it does that picture does like you said it says a thousand words mm -hmm. it's a thousand words essentially yep. running through your mind sure. associated with that picture if it's a, a positive memory of yours or if it's a, a beach or you know some right. majestic scene yep. All of it's positive. It takes you to a positive place. So that's yeah. absolutely critical. Very important. And also, I'm sure you've noticed when you go into some of the executives, their offices, not only do they have positive images, but also quotes, mm -hmm. positive, impactful quotes yes. that when they're going through anything negative, they look at them, they read them and go back to their way of thinking. Which is an important piece in that thought cycle. Words, even if you read the words and you don't say them out loud, you hear them in your own head. So you're still speaking the words, just internally speaking, and that's an important piece of this thought cycle. When you see something, those thoughts, 
it can become words whether you're uttering them aloud or whether you're hearing them internally, you're still going to have that same effect. And I just want to add, saying them mm -hmm. is much more powerful. The saying is much more powerful. You're correct. Don't yes. worry about people thinking correct. you're crazy for talking to yourself. Yes. It's okay. Yes. Open your mouth and say that positive thing. Yes. Much more powerful than just thinking it. Read the powerful, read the quote out loud, the positive out quote loud. out loud. There yes. you go. <laughs> Good point. Talk to yourself. It's okay. Yes. Talk to yourself. Positive affirmation. I do it all the time. Yes. Good job, Grandison. Pat right. myself on the back. All right. You're the man. I know. <laughs> I'm the man. Grandison, you're the man. Okay, the next one, that's more physical. Sit up straight. Relax and take a deep breath. Oh, no. That always calms me down as well. Instead of slouching, right. <clears throat> not breathing and sitting up straight. Make sure I'm relax. Up straight. <laughs> take a deep breath. Did you, did you say something? Were you mumbling again? I did not say a word. He was that talking was... to himself. Yes, he was. I was talking, he was talking to myself. Talking to... <laughs> I was thinking, what in what the, the world, world is she doing over there? <laughs> It's, it, is important, it is important to realize that your posture creates a type of energy in you. When you're just cramped over and post forward, slouching shoulders, besides having your shoulders back and chest out and chin up, you're communicating and you're also pushing out a totally different energy and you feel differently. That's scientifically proven. They've done all sorts of studies on that. That's why in our program, we also, when we get to nonverbal communication, the body language, power sitting, power standing, power posing, that all that is important. And we emphasize that to the executives that we coach as well. Yes. What do you think, Al? I agree. It's, it's critically important. Changing your physiology, even your ability to breathe and take yes. in oxygen. If you're yes. slouched over, you can't breathe as well. If you don't breathe as well, not as much oxygen is coming in. Correct. So it's, it's affecting your physiology in ways that we don't typically think about. Yep. So just sitting up allows air to come in. The oxygen, you know, if you're lacking oxygen, you're not going to feel good. Right. <laughs> you know, so, but when you get a lot of oxygen, you feel amazing. Uh, playing sports, I've had the opportunity to put on the oxygen mask. It's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's beautiful. Have you ever been to have you had oxygen at an oxygen bar or something? It's, I haven't. It's energizing. It's invigorating, right? You recover quickly. So that your, your physiology bending over uh, affects you negatively in ways you don't even realize. And just simply sitting up straight and like you said, taking that deep breath, you get more oxygen in, mm -hmm. you feel better. There you have it, folks. So That's the it. key thing is don't go to an alcohol bar. Go to an oxygen bar. Oxygen bar. <laughs> Get you a hit for that O2. Hit oxygen, O2. Boom. That's right. Just don't be smoking around O2. Right. You go, go up in flames. No, 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 yeah. Not smoking. Please don't smoke. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> go up that in is flames. not what I'm saying. <laughs> oxygen bar. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay, the next one is say, see it from another point of view or someone else's perspective. Important. As leaders, we're responsible for that all the time. We're talking with people. We have to see their, especially when they come to us with an issue, we have to see their perspective. We have to see that a different perspective, even going through before whatever the, the consequence or the result is, continually putting ourselves in another person's perspective. That's where we talk about emotional intelligence, being able to really feel the other, what the other person's perceiving, being able to tap into it from an empathetic or sympathetic standpoint. Yes. How about you? Well, like the example I used earlier with the guy I was coaching, but I think it's, it's also when you take a pause, right? That's equivalent in a lot of ways to taking a step back, mm -hmm. which changes your perspective. Right. When you have an instant emotional reaction to a situation, it's based off of this tunnel vision mm -hmm. right. that you have regarding that situation. If you take just a pause or take that step back, then that changes your perspective a little bit. It gives you the opportunity to have a different perspective yes. versus just reacting. So I think it is critically important for us as individuals, first and foremost, but then as leaders, even more so, because you do have to be able to understand uh, different people, where they're coming from, mm -hmm. context of situations. There's no ultimate or, or ultimate right or wrong answer or solution that's cookie cutter for every situation. So if you don't have the ability to see things from a different perspective, it's going to hurt your ability to perform well. All right. Yep. I like it. 
The next one, have you ever heard people say, I'm so dumb, I'm so stupid, I don't know why I did that, I cannot believe that, beating down on, on themselves. So the next one is stop being your own worst critic. Don't dwell on your mistakes. Look at yourself rationally as it is easy to get down on yourself. We are our toughest critics. Mm -hmm. That comes from a low self-esteem and that's why we talk about five parts of the self. Self-confidence, self-esteem, self-worth, self-image, self-control. Low self-esteem, as soon as the people open up their mouth, and again, this happens in the thought process too, if you're continuing to utilize self-deprecating speech, if you continue to down yourself, that means you have lower self-esteem. And you have to work at getting that up and have to change your thoughts and behave, and especially the words that come out of your mouth. I have one friend who was always saying, FML or types of F, sometimes FML in the, in the text, which means F my life. I'm thinking, no, you can't say that. You can't do that. You can't think like that. You have to think about it in a more positive manner. Yeah, I thought Tyrone will stop doing that. Yeah, Tyrone was still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you say? I think it's a, uh, I think that's a great example of the cycle. Mm -hmm. Years of the thoughts leading to the words, to the actions and the behaviors and ultimately the consequence Correct. of self-esteem being low, mm -hmm. a continued pattern of yep. self-deprecating language yep. and believing that it's the truth. <clears throat> when it comes to that, I think it's important to, that's why it's important to, to be positive, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, have quotes around you, uh, one of the things that when I was younger, I had a, a mentor that talked to me about not complimenting people in a fake way. You know, don't don't blow them up, mm -hmm. you know. So if you have something, if you want to be truthful in your compliments, find something mm -hmm. that you can tell the truth about so you can be genuine and compliment somebody. Mm -hmm. So don't just say, oh, you cute, you know, and you don't think that person is cute. Right. But surely something on them, yeah, they smile. something about them, <laughs> oh, you know, they could be, you know, not so attractive to you, but they have a beautiful smile. Like you just said, man, I love your smile. And I can say that with honesty and integrity and it'd be genuine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I know, because I'm thinking about sometimes we tell people that their babies are cute, and sometimes oh, their babies but are precious. Cute. Precious, so precious is my word. Exactly. You hear me exactly. say precious. <laughs> precious. You know. It's not cute. It's precious, but it's not cute. Oh, <laughs> you got a funny it's looking baby. That's why I'm laughing. It's, it's, it's still yeah. precious. It's but we do precious. that though, right? We do uh, that all the time. It's a very good do. point. A we lot do. of people do that, and it's it's dishonest, it's disingenuous, sure. and I don't want to be that. Right. <laughs> well, when we think about ourselves. <laughs> Find something, find anything positive that you can say to yourself about yourself. Have Absolutely. love and compassion. Dr. Joe Dispenza <coughs> talks about having compassion for yourself. Right. Find something. There's something about you that you can say something positive about. If nothing else, you've lived as long as you have. Sure. You know? yeah. Think about the good things that you've had, the, the things that you've achieved. Change your mindset around those things. Instead of complaining about what you don't have, think about something that you do have. Sure. So that way you can get out of that, get out of that cycle. Because it is easy. We have, I forgot what the exact numbers are, but it's something like 10,000 negative thoughts come at us a day. Mm -hmm. The average person thinks 10,000 negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. We get inundated. So you have to be mindful to catch those thoughts and have something to say. And if you have to try to think about something to say. That's why having positive images and having quotes around you and things like that are so important. Sure. Because you're, if you're inundated with 10,000 thoughts and you're trying to think of something positive to say, there's times where you're not going to come mm -hmm. up with anything. Yep. But if you well, have a quote right there, <laughs> I can do all things in Christ or whatever, you know, whatever sure. your, your, mm -hmm. whatever you need that's positive, you have it right there to help you. Well so said. Yeah, and that brings me to the next one. Believe in yourself. Truly believe you are the best at whatever you do. And another thing I want to add, it's not here, but I, I have done that for my daughters. During the teenage years, especially for girls, it's very difficult. There's so much competition for girls. I don't know why. They are very down on, on themselves, and especially with the social media. I told my girls, write down on a piece of paper 
what is good about you, positives and negatives, and see which list is longer. And sure enough, sure. when they write it down, the positive does seem to be longer. And then I tell them to, okay, now read it. Put it, by in the, put it on those sticky notes around your mm -hmm. mirror. I'm positive. I'm, I'm a good friend. Yes. Though you have pimples right now, you're still pretty, you know? <laughs> so something, think positive. Believe yes. in something positive yeah. about yourself. You have to be you? intentional yes. do. about it. It's you not do. something, again, 10,000 negative thoughts a day. You have to be intentional Correct. about the positive things. Mm -hmm. You have yes. to be thoughtful. And we're looking at some data in correlation with what Yasmin was saying with the social media women and cyberbullying and also suicide. They have the chart and graph. It was very interesting data that shows that as we continue to utilize social media, these other competi competitive areas continue to perpetuate, which also leads into cyberbullying, which also leads to the opportunity to cause harm to oneself. That all stems from how a person thinks. And you can't let, there are many, 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 many times, you're going to have to shut someone else's thoughts out mm -hmm. of your head so that their thought process doesn't continue the chain, a, a chain reaction which goes to your words, actions, behaviors, and consequences by what someone else is trying to put inside you. We have to continue to monitor that and have control over our own thought process. It's tough, nice. easier said than done, but we have to get to the point where we're being more intentional and yes. doing it on a deliberate, purposeful action versus by default. You know, mm -hmm. on that subject, I, I'm not a big fan of our kids having so full sure. access. Yes. Sure. Or really any access, honestly, mm -hmm. to social media. And, and to some extent, the devices that we let them use, they're designed to be addictive. Mm -hmm. These things that we're talking about are challenging as adults. And now we're handing our kids this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you see cyberbullying, mm -hmm. skyrocketing, and you know, the suicides and things like that happening. They don't, it's difficult to control as it is. And now we're giving it to kids who are not fully developed, who can't, they don't have everything they need to be able to reason well. Sure. And we see these things happening. So. And when you talk about, so from a physiological standpoint, their frontal lobe is not developed. It's not going to be developed until they're about 21, so they're more the adolescent years. And it's, it's right. something that the, the decision-making process, and this frontal lobe helps that, decision-making process. So when they see information data, they're more apt to make the wrong decision about it versus the correct decision the about it. The decision that they've been programmed sure. to make. <laughs> Those and, types of things. And yeah. especially in the current climate, where all they have, they're indoors, all they have are these electronics and social media. Mm -hmm. That's how they're communicating. It's even more apparent now. The mm -hmm. suicide rate in teenagers have gone up 21%. It's, mm -hmm. it's becoming really mm -hmm. yeah. endemic. And sure. not only the coronavirus, of course, added more to it, but now that you are in a closed environment, you should make, it a, make an effort to make sure that we're in more in their lives and even with our friends and family mm -hmm. that we are more aware of how everything is affecting them and if anything negative does arrive nip it in the bud turn it into right. something positive yeah so so ultimately be mindful folks that you're watching the video be mindful i know that's off topic a little bit but it does relate in the, in the fact that it is still a part of the cycle mm -hmm. they have thoughts they see stuff on social media they have thoughts that lead to the actions and the behaviors and those types of things. And I, I really question whether the benefit of having contact, easy access to contact them, because when we were kids, we didn't have this stuff, mm -hmm. but having that easy access, is it is it even worth it when we start looking at suicides and mm -hmm. cyberbullying? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole lot easier to be, you know, big, big willy over text sure. and over Instagram mm -hmm. than it is in person. Right. You know, and so we see a lot of that stuff. And as leaders, we have to now Think about that in terms of our workplace environment. The workplace yes. environment has now become more disparate, more virtual. Mm -hmm. And because of the home place environment, because husband and wives are at home a bit more, we also have to be cognizant of those signs that there may be some domestic violence in the home, there may be some over drinking, alcoholism, all the access that we have in terms of people and things that we typically keep in our home that we don't have access at work. As a leader, now you have to be looking for those sorts of opportunities to see if there's something that can be 
from a negative standpoint. How you communicate? Has, has this person changed how they communicate drastically versus understanding uh, versus when they were in office and we have to understand and be mindful of that all the time especially now that those offices that used to have that camaraderie and people there face to face are now more disparate yes mm -hmm. you need to stay in tune with those people correct yeah. the next one i have is avoid negative co-workers or people nothing can ruin a positive attitude like co-workers or people who bring out the negative in everything, like we talked about earlier. And it was enough to avoid or try to deal with co-workers when you were there face to face. Now, because of the, the disparate or the disparate offices or the virtual offices, let me say it like that, we have the opportunity to really shun those people. And it's not the opportunist, opportunistic time to shun someone. You still have to communicate with them. We just have to be now more opportunistic to talk to people about how certain things come across and how that may be making you feel more down in that instance and making sure we communicate that right i agree somebody that's a part of the team you still need them mm -hmm. to be successful or to operate at the highest level and if you isolate somebody you decide not to deal with them it's going to hurt your performance yep. or the organization's performance in the long run so figuring out ways to still deal with them be positive maybe uh, bring it to their attention them, right? yes communicate effectively those are still they're even more so important than when we were face to face and i'll add another thing while i'm coaching this one individual they have some issues family issues but he doesn't talk about them and i told him yesterday i said the more it's like a pot the more you keep putting in the pot and it's boiling and it's boiling there will be a time eventually it's going to boil over mm -hmm. then what's going to happen mm -hmm. it's good to talk about it with somebody that you you can share your ideas or somebody who can coach you or give you direction we don't get to the point where there's point of no return mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look for opportunity in every failure. There is an opportunity to improve. Spend time thinking of ways you can turn your setbacks at work into ways you can get ahead in the future. There's always a silver lining or there is always a rainbow at the end of the tunnel, but you have to find it. Sure, absolutely. When you're in the midst of something that didn't go right, you consider it a failure, you do have to look for those opportunities mm -hmm that can, especially the lessons learned, the lessons learned are extremely important. You have the opportunity to find the lessons learned, jot those down, take mental notes, whatever you need to do, continue to build on top of those lessons learned because that's ultimately was gonna to continue to be a successful leader, a very communicative leader, and someone that is, is accentuating the culture of accountability within your organization and doing all of that in terms of being confident and doing it to the best of your abilities based on your abilities, qualities, and judgments, and having trust in those nuances as well. Any final thoughts, Al, on our conversation? I think the one thing I would say is awareness. Be aware of the negative thoughts so that you can arrest them. Do not, don't take it lightly, like it doesn't matter. Sure. The little thought, everything, everything that exists on this planet started as a thought. Mm -hmm. Amazon, for instance, is the sure. biggest corporation, you know, billions of dollars. It started with a guy's thought. Mm -hmm. That's on the positive side. We know there's a lot of steps to get there. But on the negative side, it's the same thing. Arrest the negative thoughts. Open your mouth, say something positive, and you can be on your way to your own Amazon in your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any final thoughts? Surround yourself with positive energy, positive people and make it a habit to think positively. Absolutely. There we have it, folks. Another video for you regarding how to kill, how to mitigate those self-defeating thoughts. And as a leader, very, very important for us to continue to do that. All right, folks, until next time, I'm Granison Shines here with... Yasmin Murray. And... Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. All right, we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.